Hey guys, so today I've got an empties video. I have a lot of skincare this time and then also kind of a mix of hair care, body care, I think one makeup item. So let's go ahead and get into it. I think I want to structure this a little bit differently this time. So I'm going to split things into three categories. We're going to have products that I loved and would repurchase, products that I liked and would recommend but probably wouldn't repurchase just because I probably want to try like something new next time and then products that I didn't love and would not repurchase or recommend just to kind of switch it up normally I do like makeup then skincare then hair care body care but I figure why not switch up the format so um, also yes I am in a different location today I'm filming in my bedroom because we're fostering a mama cat and three kittens and we just found out that the mom has a ringworm and we've been keeping them separate, but I am trying to just keep that as contained as possible and stay out of that room as much as possible. So I temporarily moved all my makeup and like filming stuff into here just for probably the next few videos. So in case you're wondering, but let's go ahead and get into the uh, empties. So why don't we start with the products? Because I only have a handful of products that I used up but wouldn't repurchase and probably wouldn't really recommend either. So first we have the Sol de Janeiro Triple Brazilian Butter Hair Repair Treatment. So this is like a 30 something dollar hair mask and I enjoyed it. Like if this was 10 bucks, I would absolutely repurchase it. I do love the scent. This has the classic Boom Boom Cream scent, which I personally really like. I actually have the body spray of it back there. <laughs> That's my little mini perfume collection there. I feel like the main thing that I liked about this was that it made my hair smell good and the scent definitely did linger nicely. But as far as like actually moisturizing and like repairing my hair, because they claim that this like repairs split ends. I don't really know about that. Um, my boyfriend also really liked this. I think he liked it even a little bit more than me, but he agreed that it, it just wasn't worth the price. I did get this in PR through Octoly, so I didn't spend my own money on it and I wouldn't spend my own money on it myself but if you just I don't know if you just want to like treat yourself to a really bougie good smelling hair mask go for it but I didn't think it was anything to write home about I feel like with this kind of thing you're mainly paying for like the iconic packaging and the scent and that's about it okay next up I have the Real Techniques sponge this has gotten gross and also it's torn in a bunch of places I think I'm kind of over these Real Techniques sponges I used to really like them I feel like they used to be better and now it seems like there's a bit of like a quality control issue where some of them are really, really good. Some of them are really firm and they tear easily. And lately all the ones I've gotten have been too firm and tear easily. This one I felt like it started out super firm, but I was eventually able to kind of break it in. And it worked fine. If these were super cheap, maybe I would. Like if these were, I don't know, if these were on sale for like a dollar, I might buy them again, but I just think they're much better at the drugstore. I'm really enjoying the EcoTools Bio Blender right now, so that might be the one that I continue to go back to. I also enjoy the Beauty Blender, but that one's obviously really expensive, but it lasts so much longer than this. I've had the same Beauty Blender for like six months, and it's only just started to tear like a tiny bit. And then the last thing that I wouldn't repurchase was the, I don't know, I think I had one of these in my last empties as well, but this is the One With Nature Spa Blend Pure Active Dead Sea Mineral Salts in the Rose Petal scent, I guess. I don't know, it wasn't really scented. Like, it hardly had any scent that it added to the bath. And I really do like for my bath to have a nice scent, uh, whether it's from, like, bath salts or bubble bath or bath bomb or something like that. I've been really into taking baths lately. I wouldn't buy, like, this the single packet of anything I don't think again but even if this did come in like a bigger full size I probably wouldn't buy it just because I didn't really feel like it added much to my bath um, I did go out and purchase because I've been so much more into taking baths recently I purchased um, some bubble bath and like a big bag of bath salts from Earth Fair and um, really liking both but I didn't end up getting this one so next getting into the products that I liked probably would recommend at least if they sound like something that you would enjoy but I wouldn't repurchase just because I tend to like to try something new in these categories or they just weren't so great that they're going to become like holy grail status. So let's start with the one makeup empty that I have. I finished this in my project pan. This is the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Finishing Powder. So this is like a $3 powder. It is a somewhat small compact. It only comes with 0.17 ounces slash 5 grams which is I think like probably half the size of 
a lot of other powders so I did go through it pretty quickly once I hit pan on this it didn't take much longer to use it up. I guess it took several months, but I only use it um, really on my under eyes. When I first bought this a while ago, I really, really liked it. I thought it was great. And that was back when I was just more into powder in general. Um, but now, I don't know, I think I've gotten a lot pickier with powders and I just kind of feel like this is just okay. But I do think it's a great, really, really budget friendly option uh, if you are looking for one. The packaging sucks. It it will break on you like it will <laughs> I'm pretty sure like there's just no avoiding it it's very very flimsy um, mine broke pretty early on all the writing wore off so you know you're not going into this with like a luxury experience but it's a nice just kind of workhorse like cheap powder it's a little bit on the translucent side so you're not gonna get much coverage out of it and it does come in a few shades um, I had the shade fair slash light but I don't know. It was kind of just okay for me. Alright, some skincare. So this is the travel size of the Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid with SPF 50. So this was included in my chemical sunscreen roundup that I can link below. I ranked and reviewed um, eight different chemical sunscreens and then I also had a mineral one uh, go up before that. But this one ranked kind of in the middle. I do really, really like it. It's just that there were some others that were a much better value that I thought were equally good. So I don't think I would buy this one again. I actually had a full size of this, I think like three years ago or so. Used up the whole thing, liked it. So I would recommend this. It is very, very lightweight. Sinks in immediately. It feels like nothing on your skin. It does have a little bit of a sunscreen scent to it, but there's no added fragrance or anything. Um, but if you want to see like a demo of this, how it applies, how it looks under makeup, all of that stuff, um, I'll link the sunscreen video below because I went way more in depth in that video. A face wash that I used up is the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser by Crave Beauty. I really enjoyed this pre-tretinoin, but ever since I started tretinoin in April, my skin has just been very, very dry, and I've switched to a non-foaming cream cleanser from Paula's Choice that I'm really loving. It's their, it's from their Skin Recovery line. Loving that one. Um, and I found that even this, even though this is called a hydrating cleanser, it's still like a gel cleanser that does, it doesn't foam up a ton, but it does have a little bit of a lather to it. Um, I just found that even this was a little bit too drying on my skin currently. So maybe in the future I'd go back to it, but for now I've just moved on to something that is working a bit better for me at the moment. So next up we have the Eva NYC Deep Tox Exfoliating Salt Shampoo. So I've been on a bit of a journey with my scalp, as I'm sure you know because you've been along for the ride for it whether you wanted to be or not. I was getting really into scalp scrubs last year. And my favorite one was the Zion Health Scalp Scrub, and I actually repurchased three of them <laughs> recently. I stocked up on iHerb, and for some reason I feel like it's different. Like it feels thicker, and I don't know if I just got an old one or what. So this is all a backstory, and then I'll circle back to this. But I, lately I've been feeling like maybe scalp scrubs aren't necessary. I mean, I know they're not necessary, but... I don't even know if they're that great for my scalp, and I've wondered if they might cause breakage. I don't know. I mean, it seems like because, you know, it's a, a physical scrub, maybe it could cause breakage, especially if it's a coarser exfoliator, but I don't know. Does anybody know if there's any truth to that, or am I worrying unnecessarily? I don't know. But I've definitely had a lot of baby hairs growing in. It could be completely unrelated, in fact, it probably is. But, um, I don't know, it's just something that's that's been on my mind. But anyway, I did use up the Eva NYC one, and I enjoyed it. It's a very um, accessible option, at least if you live in the U.S., you can get it at Ulta. And I think probably Target as well, or at least Target's website. And I liked it. Smelled great. I really enjoyed the Eva NYC scent of their products. But... I don't think I'd buy it again. I don't know. I think I'm kind of just moving on from scalp scrubs. I think as long as I have like a good shampoo and a medicated shampoo because I do have um, seborrheic dermatitis on my scalp, as long as I have that, I think I'm good and I probably don't need a scalp scrub. So I, I don't know. But if you're looking for one or if you want to try one, I do think this is a good option. Oh, and the nice thing about this is that it does double as a shampoo so you don't have to use it so you don't have to go in with a separate shampoo after using this. It's like a scrub and a shampoo all in one, and it does rinse out 
pretty easily, at least in my experience. Okay, the last thing that I was fine with, but I wouldn't, I don't know, I probably wouldn't repurchase it. I wouldn't go out of my way. Maybe I would if it was like on sale or something, but this is the seventh generation easy dose laundry detergent. So it's a kind of small bottle, but it's a very concentrated bottle. And it's got this interesting top that you like turn it upside down and give it like a firm squeeze and it pumps out like exactly one dose as they call it. Um, and like one squeeze is one load's worth and then you can of course do two if it's a more um, soiled load. It said it came with 66 loads. I didn't count. I always wonder how accurate that number is, but I thought it was fine. This was the Tropical Grove scent. At first I was kind of disappointed because I felt like the, the scent didn't linger on my clothes. But then I kind of realized that in, if you want like a lingering scent on your laundry, you need to use like scent beads or like a really scented fabric softener or something along those lines. Some kind of scent booster because just a regular old laundry detergent, is it's not going to leave behind a scent. At least not like the cruelty-free brands. So I thought it was nice. I like that it's kind of a more compact bottle, but I've been really into just the um, laundry strips from, what's the name of the brand? True Earth is the ones that I have. Really nice like zero waste option. Um, it's just like a strip of detergent that you tear off and it works just like liquid detergent. So I really like those. Um, they are kind of pricey though, so I don't know. We'll see what I end up repurchasing in the future, but this was just fine. But I felt like it did get my clothes clean, so I guess that's all you can really ask for. And then finally we have the category of products that I loved and would most likely repurchase. I'm not like promising that I'm going to repurchase them, but like most likely I could see myself repurchasing. The one that I... I'm not sure I'll repurchase, but I did really, really love it, was the Crave Great Barrier Relief um, Skin Barrier Repairing Serum. So this was actually, it, it sort of looked like a moisturizer, like it was kind of a cream texture, but it definitely, for me at least, didn't work as like a standalone moisturizer. I would use it as my serum step, and I really did feel like this helped my skin. Both prior to using tretinoin and while on tretinoin, I felt like it really did help kind of just like reset my skin barrier whenever my skin was kind of irritated or extra dry any of that I would just use this and I really really felt like it made a difference it has tamanu oil sunflower oil rosehip oil vitamin b3 which is niacinamide so I did really enjoy that I haven't repurchased it yet and I don't really have any plans to but I could see myself buying this again down the road if I feel like I really need it again. So another thing that I've been loving, and I actually already repurchased it, but this is the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery Replenishing Moisturizer. So their skin recovery line has been great for me lately. I've been using this, um, the cleanser in this line, the overnight mask in this line, the, I just recently bought the toner, like I'm, I'm knee deep in the skin recovery line lately. I've been loving it. Uh, it's been great just as I've been adjusting to tretinoin. But this moisturizer is great. It's definitely quite rich. It says it's for dry to very dry skin, so you probably would find it too heavy if you have, like, oily skin. But I've been loving it. I don't feel like it has caused me to break out. Fingers crossed, actually. I haven't really been having a ton of breakouts lately, which is so nice. Um, but yeah, I've been using it morning and night pretty much every day, except for some nights I will use their overnight mask, which is basically just like an even heavy, heavier duty version of this uh, moisturizer. So like I said, already repurchased it. I feel like it's one of the few moisturizers that really is like rich and hydrating enough for my skin right now. Also from Paula's Choice, I have their Omega Plus Complex Cleansing Balm. This they did send to me, which I was very grateful for. I loved this cleansing balm. It's one of the few fragrance-free cleansing balms or oils that I know of. And I also really liked that it was in a tube because, I don't know, I don't love having to like dig into a jar. I don't mind it, but I feel like a tube is just much more convenient. So I, I just looked back at my Instagram stories to see when I first tried this and it was March 26th and then I just finished it like a few days ago. So I was able to get about two and a half months of use out of this, which is what, like 60, maybe 70 uses, which I feel, feel like is actually pretty good. I felt like I went through it really fast, but that's probably on par with most cleansing balms and oils. It is like $28, which is more than I'd be willing to spend on a cleansing balm that I go through that regularly, but I would definitely buy it again on sale. I also, though, am really enjoying the 43 Beauty BFD cleansing oil. That's an oil rather than a balm. That one I feel like is equally effective at removing all my makeup, so that's probably the one I'll stick to for like a budget-friendly option. I think that one's like 14 bucks, and um, depending on how 
quickly I go through that too. But if I do ever see this on a really good sale, I would purchase this because I really enjoyed this as well. Very effective. It's not messy. It's not greasy at all. It emulsifies really well. Um, just a great cleansing balm. Another skincare product I loved and used up all the way. This is the Kinship Self Reflect uh, Probiotic Moisturizing Sunscreen with SPF 32. So this is a mineral sunscreen. This um, was actually the winner for my mineral sunscreen roundup this year. I tested 13 different mineral sunscreens. This one came out on top. I really enjoy this. Um, it is sort of tinted, but in a way that it really does kind of blend in clear. Like it's not a very opaque tint, if that makes sense. And um, I feel like the tint is just kind of there to neutralize the zinc oxide, because zinc oxide based sunscreens are notoriously very white casty. But this one, I felt like there was no white cast, at least on my skin tone. I've also heard from deeper skin tones that this works well. So I will leave that mineral sunscreen video linked down below if you want to see, again, like a demo, all of that. Uh, I go a lot more in depth, but I would repurchase this. They actually sent me the value size of this, so I'm stocked up for a while, but I would also repurchase it with my own money because. It's amazing. This is the one that I kept wanting to reach for over all the other sunscreens that I was testing out, which is how I went through it as quickly as I did. This was a bath product that I would buy like the full size of. This was the Seaweed Bath Co. Hydrating Seaweed Bath um, with sea salt, argan oil, and kukui oil. This was a lavender scented one, and I, I did feel like the scent was a lot more noticeable with this one. It also did kind of smell like seaweed, which I didn't really mind, and it actually, I think it was kind of green or something. Um, kind of an odd looking color, but I mean it's from the seaweed. And I've heard good things about this brand. I might want to try more from them. I saw that they do, I think they do sell bigger sizes of some of their stuff at Earth Fair, so I might look into more from them. Um, but yeah, I thought it was nice. And then I also finished up another Lave soap. This is the Spellbound scent. Really love this scent and the other one that I had in my previous empties that I think was Orchards, if I'm not mistaken. Both beautiful scents. Spellbound was kind of like a spicy, sweet scent. Really enjoyed it. Um, I really like their soaps, uh, and I would definitely buy more. They're like a small, woman-owned business. And they're one of the few bar soap brands that I like really enjoy using. <laughs> a lot of bar soaps I just find kind of annoying or like too drying, but these are not drying at all. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there was another bar soap I used up, but it was package free, so I didn't have any packaging to save, but it was the Soap Gem from Eco Roots. That was sent to me in like a PR package from them. That was nice. It had like a herbal kind of botanical scent. Really cute looking because it looked like a gem. Um, but I felt like I went through it really, really fast because it was kind of small. I just didn't think it was that great aside from like the cute aesthetic of it, but I would purchase the Lave over that one. This is a new found holy grail. This is the EOS Shea Better 24 Hour Moisture Vanilla Cashmere body lotion. I talked about this I think in my spring favorites and EOS is newly cruelty free so I am so excited to be able to buy from them now because they're such an accessible brand. Two things that I love about this. Number one, the scent. Smells very vanilla-y like you obviously have to like vanilla <laughs> to want this but it smells to me exactly like vanilla bean noel from Bath and Body Works which is such a like I don't know that's such a great like yummy vanilla scent. Very warm. Mmm, I love it. The other thing I love about it is the texture. It's just so rich. It really is more like a body butter than a body lotion. Like, super thick, buttery, but blends into the skin quickly. It doesn't feel greasy or anything, but it really does leave my skin feeling so hydrated. So I will absolutely buy this again. I now have one from Kapari that I'm using up, but once that one is gone, I will definitely buy this again. In fact, I may even buy it sooner just so that I can have it like on my nightstand or something because I like to have a few lotions around the house. Um, amazing, amazing lotion. Now, the only complaint I have <laughs> is the packaging. So once I got to like probably three quarters of the way down, or maybe even a little bit higher than that, the pump stopped dispensing product. So I ended up having to go in with a spatula to get it out for the last probably like a few weeks that I had it. But to me that wasn't even really a deal breaker because I love the lotion so much. But I would love if they would put it in either like a jar, like a tub, or a squeeze tube. I think that would be better packaging for such a thick lotion because I feel like because it's so thick, the pump just stops working once you get to a certain level. So that was the only thing, but I, I love this so much. Um, I might try some of the other scents, but this scent is 
outstanding. All right, I think that is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this empties video. Um, if you're new to my channel, I upload about three videos a week, and I really like to focus on like conscious consumption of makeup and beauty, so if that sounds like your jam, I'd love to see you again soon, and hopefully I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!